I'm Max. I will be building the Excalibur rocket, uh, model rocket from uh, public missiles. And I'm here to catalog what I'm doing along with um, helping anyone who has questions or wants to know more about how to build this stuff or anyone who's interested in general in model rocketry. This is the um, pamphlet that I'm going to be using. Public Missiles gave it out to me. Um, here we go. Great diagrams. Fantastic instructions. Right. Uh, pretty much everything you need comes with the kit, except for uh, your motor tension system, which is right here. I will be using drills with um, with uh, insert nuts that I'll be uh, drilling in and then using these to uh, keep it inside, keep the motor uh, uh, safely inside. I'm using Gorilla Glue uh, with um, 3,300 PSI spawn strength and five minute set time, water resistant obviously. And uh, a drill for some stuff quantum tubing which is provided by public missiles uh, you know, great instructions pretty much everything's here that's the nose cone um, those are the fins so I bought these fins for a reason or specifically this kit for a reason these fins um, they're not really sharp like a lot of other fins can be now the problem with fins that I've had is they stick in the ground, and that's why I um, did not get the certification on the Phobos rocket. I could have sanded that down, but at the time, I did not know that I should have done that. So, hopefully this will remedy it, because the Phobos landed like this into the ground, and since there's not really anything here, I don't think it's going to, I think it would be more likely to land like this, where it wouldn't be stuck in the ground and then tear out. So again, I'm also going to use more epoxy on the uh, fins as well to help me with that. Okay, so um, the instructions recommend that you read over the entire uh, pamphlet first. I've already done that. So I'm not going to do that with you because that's probably very boring. So it, I'm going to go over what it recommends that you use, which is um, epoxy, sandpaper, 120 to 220 sandpaper, uh, ruler and pencil, as well as masking tape and cellophane tape. So please read all instructions and use 120 grit sandpaper for bonding. So um, this is our first step. Epoxy. Take your motor tube. Take your two uh, saturated rings. One of them is just a regular circle and one of them has an indent here. Uh, and we're going to be using that, putting it right here on the um, motor mount, okay? But the thing about this is um, the one that's just a pure circle, I'm not epoxying it. At first I'm just doing, uh, I'm putting tape around it so I can pull it out later. And the reason for that is I'm gonna epoxy this in, right? With our uh, with the um, strap for the piston ejection system, it's gonna stay here, right? And that's gonna stay in the rocket. However, this end needs to come out later for the um, dowel, which will help me put um, the epoxy on the inside of the rocket, so I can put the fins on better. Right. Move the clutter so you guys can see easier. like no ventilation system and epoxy to kill some brain cells. Just in time for college too. So what's great about Gorilla Glue is that it gives you your own little tray and divot for your epoxy and you can push it down 
and they both come out at the same speed. So you know you're getting a one to one ratio. So just punch out this thing, which holds it together. And another great thing about that is it includes these like little needles that go inside when you take this and make sure everything's clear. Oh wait, no, it's actually the um it's the lock. So once I take this off, this locks it. Makes sure, oh shoot, it's getting everywhere. Makes it, ah, fantastic. Um, let's make sure that it comes out perfectly fine. And it has a special lock right here. So you know you're not mixing the um, one side of the epoxy with the other which would then make sure that this stays on forever because it's epoxy. Great. This video is sponsored by Gorilla Glue. Yes, it is. Oh, shit. Uh oh This was not evenly spread. Oh, no. Oh, boy. So that was the opposite of an even spread. My epoxy, but you know, it sometimes just it just be like that sometimes. Okay. So notched centering ring on one side. It does not matter. Uh, let's see how far down it should be. Half an inch. Where is my ruler? gap where the uh, piston strap goes that I gotta make sure I don't put on. That's bad and would ruin my chance of getting a piston on here. So get a good amount of that on. And I've already broken the instructions. to make sure it gets, gets all over. Um, I'm going to to dry now. So the next step is for this to go on the other end, right, with tape. So the point is I'll be able to use the tape to pull it back out. Okay, so hopefully this will be able to see it's not good because as soon as I try to pull it out, it just it seems to be breaking. Uh, hopefully that's not too damning. Right, that's pretty much what I would need to do to get that done. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the epoxy to dry, I'm going to go over the electronics that will be traveling in the Excalibur. First one is the Jolly Logic Altimeter one, which will just display the uh, altitude. Second is the most expensive thing on the rocket, even including the rocket itself, which is the Jolly Logic shoot release. Then the uh, Transolve Beep X, so that I can find it hopefully if anything goes oh gosh, fuck astray. Yep, that's the uh, that's the uh, 
you're all set to go. Message. This video is sponsored by Energizer and Jolly Logic and Public Missiles. Thanks, guys. Yes, it is. I promise it is. Uh, Poxy's almost ready. Just like the very tip, I'm going to have to stick it in a little bit more. 
basically what's going to happen is this will uh, go inside. Okay. Go inside, right? Then come back out. So it's more epoxy time. Throw that all in my epoxy resin drawer. Put it all in there. Then out. mix this bad layer into a concoction you can use. And then Put that in so the strap is not in line with a uh, with the fin strap. Okay. So the problem was my dowel was broken, and that's a problem because that's how I'm getting the motor mount to the epoxy. And if I can't get it there, then what will end up happening is it will just slide out, and the motor will just eject. So let me grab a flashlight and see how it works. You actually can't see that, but yeah. Basically, it's past the um, epoxy, so it's definitely got some epoxy on it. I think I'm fine. Okay. No, I just go wait for it to dry. Put it in here. Got it. So we also. First step is to take one of the nuts, screw it on all the way first. Once you do that, put the uh, bulkhead on. Uh, okay. So this makes it easier. I'm just using that as leverage because it's easier to grip than the um, I hook on its own. All the way up. Now uh, the washer on and the final eyeball. So it's gonna look like this in the end. Uh, coupler. This is the final coupler, and it's gonna couple between the uh, body tube and the. Um, payload section, halfway. So it fits both of the, their diameter upon the ejection charge. This will stay inside the uh, payload, but it will be hooked using this to the parachute and to the motor, right? I'm just gonna eject, you know, in model rocketry style. Push the couple inside to a depth of about half an inch. Push the bulkhead assembly into the coupler with one. Oh, the layer of epoxy again. Another layer of epoxy. Like you can really like smell this epoxy. Not good for me. Um, so built, just real quick. Sandpaper and clear. 
that would uh, grip easier and bond with the epoxy better. So let's tighten it with a wrench. You're not going to do that step, which you probably should. I'm not. Alright. So, about half an inch. I've got it in. Um, throw some bits of epoxy on here. Now, this is a really important part because this part needs to stay inside the um, coupler, needs to stay put inside the um, inside the um, coupler needs to stay inside the uh, air uh, the payload section but it also needs to connect with the parachute and the rest of the rocket out okay now using a twisting motion twist it in okay just to kind of get the epoxy all spread around and leave it now uh, let the epoxy set in the meantime we're going to be working on another step which is the nose okay. like this obviously and like smaller model rockets, the nose cone isn't what comes out, it's this entire section. So I'm just going to screw this on. What it also does is it makes sure that the payload section, which is this part, holds that when it holds the electronics bay, nothing happens to it. So this part stays safe. That's very important. Um, okay. Ooh, that's a nice little pop. So, um, just finished up the drilling part, and this is what you need to do. So, drill into the nose cone, one inch from the nose cone. Put these screws there. This secures the nose cone on. I'm a little bit worried about what, what it does to the aerodynamic possibilities and capabilities of this rocket, but whatever. And then what's really interesting is down here, there is a one eighth hole, right? And this is for um, air pressure to bleed out since it's a sealed environment at the high speeds, the air pressure where you launch is not going to be where you end up. So if you're 2000 feet in the air, the air pressure is a lot less and that would cause this, this area, the payload section to like have a lot of contents under high pressure. This lets the air bleed out as you reach that Altitude, so your alt uh, your air pressure inside the payload section is the same as in the air, so that's pretty cool. Um, the uh, payload section and the coupler is all dry, which is pretty nice. So now that the um, body tubing is dry and the fins are all dried with epoxy, we can move on to the next step, which is removing the uh, centering ring and then epoxying it. This is difficult because I'm using scotch tape. So uh, have fun with that. I'm just going to work in kind of a twisting motion, trying to get all of this, like, so it comes out equally. Just pulling on each end. There's no epoxy. It's not budging, but the tape certainly is budging. Oh, I just forgot something towards the bottom. OK, almost there, almost there. Uh -oh. So this section just not moving at all. Oh, and we're we're almost out. Okay, final part, and we're free. Good job. So now, we can take a quick look at what this looks like. So I have the um, parachute cord in there, but. Look, I have all of the um, fins reaching there. Uh, probably should put some epoxy in that area. Just make sure it's all set.
All right, so finished up the last, well, kind of the last part. There you go. So it's all epoxied in there. Here's the um, part for the piston ejection system, which I'm gonna just do right now, very quickly. Okay. So we need this. We need this. We need this. All right, and we need the last part of the uh, the other side, which comes out of your body tubing, which is this little ribbon. Okay. So the ribbon goes through the uh, the ring. Okay. It's gonna help it guide through around the uh, D ring, then uh, back into your uh, your little ring right here. So it's a little bit hard to um get the thing through. I had a lot of trouble, but then I realized I could use the masking tape and kind of taper off this end and then just pull it through and it pulls out so much easier. So yeah, something do something like that if you want to uh, get it really uh, get it in there and be able to do it without that much uh, hassle. And then you only really need about this much like play room, right? Just pull it tight. You're gonna get some ex excess like stuff. Just hold it steady, pull it down, okay? So that you're working with this much. And actually, let me just zoom out. Yeah. So this is what you're working with. Now, all you need next is just epoxy, obviously, because we love epoxy, public missiles. I don't, I'm actually not affiliated with public missiles, so public missiles loves epoxy, not we love epoxy in public missiles. Don't think I would get sued for saying that, since it's such a niche, like, interest group. Not a lot of people are model rocketry enthusiasts. Okay, so this is the final piston ring. Uh, it's here. So there you go. That's what it looks like. It's fully made. Just put an epoxy on it. You can see where it leads. It leads back into the uh, the tubing for the uh, rocket inside it's all hooked up so this ring is going to connect to that this ring right here with the parachute and a parachute cord so yeah that's how it's going to work okay so this is like the parachute and I'm going to do one of the last steps which is getting the parachute ready and connecting that to the shock cord, which will then in turn connect through the eye ring, which will then connect to the, um, to the uh, piston. Before I do that, just gotta make sure that everything's equal. And now I'm gonna pull it tight. And now we got this little knot right here and all this workable area. Now we're gonna tie the uh, nylon. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm gonna be using. So then it says tie it around. This part is straight. This is the excess area. So I'm gonna cross it, and loop it back through, and then just kind of pull tight with the. Uh, one third, kind of like that, okay? So I got that, that's all set. Now, what I'm going to use is the, um, I'm gonna tie the tubular nylon to the uh, payload section, not the payload section, to the um, piston injection system, which is right here, I just epoxied that. All right, so, it's gonna, it says six inches, I'm gonna give her an eye and just kind of do my best to guess. 
which is smart, and it's the same thing that NASA did to get to the moon. They kind of like guessed. Is now the right time to launch? Do we need this much? And they were just like, well, you know, throw that many people in that much. It'll be fine. And you know what? They got to the moon and they made it second place. Second place isn't bad. They lost to the Soviets, the North Koreans, and the South Koreans. Yeah. All right. Space fact of the day. Jupiter is not real. Uh, and just now, my next step is to epoxy this knot, which I'm gonna do. Everything's out of focus, probably. Spinning up that epoxy. Epoxy resin. Putting it on my knot. Knot of epoxy resin. Just literally coating it with epoxy resin so it cannot be untied ever. Now, if I were smart, I'd literally just put me on mute and uh, watch with my hands because it's perfectly doable. You do not need to hear my voice ever, literally ever. <laughs> not, not, not sad about that. One, two, three, four, five, then back through the final ring and just pull it tight. Oh, and did I break it? No, I made it fine. It's fine. Just pull it tight. This definitely isn't the correct knot, but doesn't matter. It's just rocket science. Fuck, has this been in front of my entire filming? If it has, I'm fucked. Whatever, I'll just write out a dialogue and mute this part. Right? Maybe not mute this part. Maybe this is interesting. It doesn't matter. This will get at max 10 views. And those will be from me. And then I'll delete it because it's embarrassing. Hopefully no one will find it. I'm not using my real name. Okay. So now that that is being dried, that's literally the final steps of recording. Boom. And boom, some more stuff just right on there. Great. Slide it forward. Slide it back and forth a little bit. Great, it's on. Now the great thing about these launch lugs, or these launch rails, I guess, is that they are built like this. They have these little like indents out on the sides. I'm not sure if you can see that, but here you go. Hey, sorry. Yeah, you can see that now. Okay, that means you can't. You're gonna have a lot of trouble placing it like that. It kind of slips into place, if that makes sense, which is really cool, so that you know it's on not only straight, or if you're if you're uh, putting it on parallel to the uh, rest of the rocket. So now the problem is just centering it so that it's like perfectly straight with the other one that's right down there. Okay, everyone. So. I lined up my launch lugs pretty straight with the uh, with some tape. So you know that's the final part. Um, this launch lug is the um, center of mass for this rocket. Um, that will help keep it steady. This is a little bit more than two inches, but I think it'll be fine if you ask me. All right, great. So, thank you for watching. This is the build of the Excalibur rocket from Public Missiles. Um, it's not completely done yet. I still have a couple of steps left. Building an electronics bay that fits inside the payload station, as well as painting. So, kind of those two are next, along with final adjustments with epoxy and the fins and everything, sending them down, trying to figure out what altitude I should do for my um, for my altimeter or for my Jolly Logic uh, shoot release. Great. Um, if you want to see a quick
All right. Um, so just finished up my electronics bay. That's the final like building component for my rocket. Here we go. That's my altimeter housing. This is my uh, Transolve Beep X, which will alert me to where it is. So I drilled it into right here, and like I have this hole, so I can press the. Actually, can't press the on button on this. Here. Try my best. If I stick my. Uh, even if I stick my finger in there, like I can't get it. But I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out later. Come launch time. Anyway, so right here I have like a little loop thing. It's gonna stick out the back so I can pull it. I'm gonna show you guys what it's like. Uh, so the um the cotton tubing for the uh, paintbrush is what I'm using, and that hopefully will keep the friction or will have enough friction friction to make sure that it stays in its spot. There you go, this is the little loop I'm be, gonna be using. And here is the paintbrush. I just literally cut off two little loops so I could use that. Here, I'm just gonna grab this, my flashlight. There's my electronics and everything. That's it, video over.